Hey guys, this is Lauren Projections, the okay, and then the Fall 6213, and I'm back in Essence Part 14, which is pretty cool, if you ask me. <laughs> I always say something like that. Great. And I'm just going to keep on going, I guess. So yeah. And yeah. Dirt. Debris. Darkness. More volume. <laughs> In the middle of the day, and yet the sun scare, uh, scare, ah, what? Blot the ground. Calf kicks through a murky puddle. Scrapes the, uh, scrapes his head with a rusty, scrapes his head over a rusty car as he moves by it. Walking through the empty city is a lot like looking through a photo album. Every scene I see, I can't help but wonder how things used to be, and I begin to summon memories that aren't mine to begin with. Jerry and March sharing drink drinks at the bar with huge windows. Eek, the bartender, bragging about the framed signed baseball bat that so often the regulars can quote his stories word his story word for word. Izzy and Michael, lurking around at 3 a.m. to spray up Sinti Sunday walls at the corner of the saloon and Thai restaurant. The business suit and checkered jumper Alan laid back on the bed uh, for himself and his daughter that that morning before something went horribly wrong and their clothes were dingy and sun bleached. Long, long before the brick walls was knocked in and I could see his first floor bedroom. Every step is a glance into a past. I wish I could, uh, I wish I couldn't see. Passing an office, I hear the clatter of keyboards. From the grand oak portal of the courthouse resounds the <laughs> words, the gavel's fun finality and fluttering lens of the media. For an instant, a flat line when on the playground I see great schoolers on the jungle gym and, the t and a toddler on the seesaw. But the sun fills my eyes and I can see they're just clothes, little shirts and pants that rode the wind and snacked up on the stru structures. Calf. He wears the most popular expression. Not the angry or bitter one, just the one that says he doesn't care about the world just as much as it doesn't care about him. Despite finishing his snacks, he doesn't chuck the trash, instead tucking the bags into his pockets. You see a trash can? Staring, I don't look from him as I point to one of the edge of the playground, uh, or as he silently throws the plastic away. I almost want to punch him. I want something. Anything from this unfeeling jerk. Don't, don't you care at all? Doesn't this bother you? The apathy in his voice chills me to my core. What good would it be? Would being bothered do now? Watching him shake his head away uh, and walk away, I understand just how far past caring, past caring calf is. Come on, I want to see the other people. <laughs> nope. Everything, everything's been in this sad shape of long before you ever woke up, princess. Not the world I remember. Of course, there's tons of people like you who whine and worry and send telly, but still manage to see the good in everything and always give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And then there's people like me, who see the truth. You. I'm sure whatever you remember seems like Disney World compared to what you're living now, but this filth and decay. Striding up to a crusty bottle, Calf kicks it as hard as he can. Even for all his strength, the plastic container barely clatters re returning to the ground. It's lacklustre landing only seemed to provoke him further, his skin flushing and voice rising. And just shallowness, emptiness. I don't see how it could have turned out any other way. 
It's been a long time coming. I just roll my eyes at him. So all these people who suddenly died, it's their fault now. Even more, he's angry at a bunch of litter than the tragedy of the matter. Unbelievable. Did you expect the pen, the horrid souls of the little bucks to come and clean up the old trash cat? Oh, that's clever, huh? You're so ignorant it almost almost wakes, makes me weep. You don't get it. You never do. All of this, all of this is because people don't realize what they already have. I claw at my hair. This guy, this guy, I can't stand him. Well, that sounds British. I can't stand him. What does this even? People will give up everything good for something they think is better. He wheels on me as he spits the words. Even as they yap into into silence, I don't understand. But his ardor prevents me from questioning him. The whole city, however many years ago, I don't know, but. I know it started small, close knit, happy. Then what? It has to get bigger, better. Everything does. That's the human nature, right? There's room for more, so we want more and we take more, scraping and scoffing every last crumb of the cook from the cookie jar. He turns from me, spreading his arm and address in his fan of his phantom audience. Well, look where more gets you. It's grand, isn't it? So something advancement, human improvement. Who needs grass, trees? Let's just tear it all down and cover it, cover everything in con concrete, so we can squeeze in this burger joint and this burger joint and keychain store, like the one right around the block. It's all right as long as we keep a potted plant in the window. Who needs the stars? What, that's what street street lights are for. Why do I need fresh air when I've got air conditioning inside? Why should I be unique and believe what I want when I could fit in with everyone else? It's so terrible when people disagree with me. Why should I think when there's so much? It's so much e easier to let others do it for me. Until his bullet wound checks him, calling. Calling a hand to his shoulder, calf voices escalates with his something. I rush to him, but he waves me, waves, waves me away, as though the bullet in his chest is nothing more than a splinter. I can only gape at the hole in his shirt as he goes ranting with just as much fever, if not balloon. Before blight happened, improvement was an improvement. It was all about making things easier, lazy. Not caring for people, but hurting them. Not about selling something good, but making a quick buck. Not about sharing ideas, but shutting down dis disagreement. Ah, sorry, have to move. <clears throat> Not taking care of what you have, but getting what you want. I hardly know what to think when he goes on, because I realize that it's the first time he's being. Entirely sinners with me. He really cares about this. In more than just a disgusted, miserable something way, pain glints in his eyes even more so as he draws his arm and lowers his voice to a mumble. The empty city does bother him because he remembers the old world, and no matter how horrible he says it, it was he misses it. I don't know if you get what I mean, Alice. I'm not saying civilization was trying to cure a ramp man disease is bad. I'm not something enjoying a Jew and nothing every now and then. It's about knowing when enough is enough and stopping. His tirade complete, he lets one, two, three steps fill the silence and halts at the edge of the block. I try to lay my unease at his sudden stop by hasting past the alley, but he snatches my wrist. This is the place. Okay. I jerk my hand, uh, free my hand, and start, uh, and start down the path. But only after a few paces, I realize that he hasn't moved. Is there a reason you're not coming? 
Unclenching his fist, he heaves a deep breath, brushes his bangs across his forehead, and breathes pa breezes past me. Yeah, I was just trying to decide if you should really see this. I slow down. See what? When he doesn't answer, my po pace slows to a crawl. I peer past him to find the alley cramped with boxes and bags uh, that bars seeing anything more than a few yards away. Kath grips my hand tightly as we scale piles of bar as we scale piles of garbage and then slide down the slick plastic mounds. If he hadn't made me so nervous, I'm sure this would be fun. Or maybe not. Just as I rise from a heap of back I feel something stroke my back. Turning around I see it's a hand. A human hand. Patrolling through the back. Trolling, what the hell? <laughs> I can't really talk. I barely meme a scream with my own hand, but it lash it away from my face as though it's uh, it's the severe hand touching me. Only after witnessing the one, I do notice the unnatural shades jacking within the rest of the backs. A black shiny angle that could be an el elbow and oblong bump that could be ahead. Kathy, you let me over that, you... What are you whining about? It's... His mouth clamps shut when he sees it. Once he adverts his eyes, blinking for a long time, he prouts my back, pushing me forward. C come on, let's... Hands off! I... Don't touch me, I'm fine! I run farther down the alley towards the opening. Alex, no, stop! Don't go that way! He warns me, but it's already too late. Ascending so high it almost fades from the sight. An enormous pillar assaults the sky, ascending to a point where a human hand stiffly pursues beginning hurts. Every, every single thought, every feeling hush out of me as a tang uh, as tangibly as the gust wheezing past the angles. The rattling, shaky breath of a giant sick and all the people he devoured, and the people that lived here. Something here, in a massive scrap, keep the form. Arms, knees, toes, all piled up in, on top of each other, like trash, like trash a dump, and some whole bodies. I curl over to vomit, but there's nothing inside me. It, they're not people, else. Kath's shoes caught up beside me. They haven't decomposed. It's, what difference does that make? I want nothing more than to blink open my eyes and have everything vanish before me. But even after I look again, there's still, there's still severed limbs and gutted structures from which gaskets and wires spray oil and sparks. Stay long and at the mound until so I catch the gaze of two glassy arms. No more. No. Oh, I thought you could handle it. Who in their right mind would be would ha could handle this? I shoot my feet and smack the, the boy who is uh, just the bright blue blur. Uh, who is just a bright bright blue blur? Red, blue, blur. Who can say that? <laughs> Through my tears. Just because you can. Half sane, half self-absorbed. I'm feeling a shove him, beat his chest and punch him again, knowing that strike him, him near his wound. Thinking all the while he's, he was that he's going to kill me, that he's going to rip me apart just like the rest of them as soon as he comes to his senses. But I realize how unsatisfying hitting him, hit, hitting him is before he snaps and sinks to his feet, fists curling into vice grips of his jeans skirt. I, I sob in his stance. Why would you show me people so many souls cut up and thrown into dump like garbage? What's wrong with you? I have to end the episode here. Yeah. <laughs> Too dramatic, but uh, I will see you next time. Bye!